Want to make your track sound like they've been kissed by a Grammy-winning engineer using stock plugins and Logic Pro's new mastering assistant? Yeah, me too. And guess what? It's possible. Today, we're diving into the world of mastering. Not the wave of magic wand and prey kind, but the real, gritty, do-it-yourself mastering. We'll be using only Logic Pro's mastering assistant and stock plugins to do it. Stay tuned till the end because there's a bunch of tips to learn in this video. Seriously, if I would have known some of these techniques and had these tools 10 years Years ago, my masters might not have sounded like a dying goat. But before you even think about mastering, let's get one thing straight. Your mix has to be solid. Mastering won't fix a bad mix. It's like putting lipstick on a pig. So get the mix right first before hopping into the mastering stage. Also, it's important to have some breathing room for your track, otherwise known as headroom. Your track needs it to avoid sounding like a distorted mess. Now, let me show you a really easy way to do it in Logic if you're already clipping or running into distortion problems on the stereo out bus. Let's hop in. First of all, open up your track. Now, I'm gonna go to one of the loudest parts of my track and play it. I'm gonna go back to my stereo out bus and just see where I'm at. I'm at minus eight, so I have plenty of room. Now let's say for example, this was even higher, maybe even clipping at minus zero. That's exactly where we don't want it to happen. To get rid of that, we can create something called VCA tracks. VCA tracks are these two things that I've created right here. Now to create a VCA track, we need to select all of the tracks that we want to use. I like to separate my vocals from my instruments. So I'm gonna select all of my vocal tracks by clicking here, and then shift clicking until I have the top of them. That way all of them are selected. Then I'll click X on my keyboard to open up the mixer. Then I'll click on view up here or options, sorry. And then I'll click create new VCA for selected channel strips. After clicking on that, that will populate this section right here, which says VCA. Then you can click on this box right here with all of these selected and select which VCA you'd actually like to go to. In this case, I've named one Vox and I've named one Instruments. A VCA is really cool because it helps you after the fader to turn the volume down. For example, if I was too hot, I could take both of these, shift click them to pair them together and put them both down at the same time. That would make my mix softer. Check it out in real time. Right, none of my mixing changes have been affected. All of my plugins are still hitting the exact same. I'm just taking the volume down a little bit. And negative 12 is right about where I want to be. That's usually what I recommend DBFS, which is this way of looking at volume, that you're around negative 12 is a great place for your mix to be before mastering. And even a little bit hotter, even up to negative 10 and negative nine is totally fine. If you're at negative four or negative three, you might want to consider turning it down. Now that we have some headroom and we're not clipping, let's add a metering plugin to monitor our loudness levels. It will show us what we're hitting the loudness that we need to to be competitive with other songs on streaming platforms. The plugin that I like to use is called Ulean Loudness Meter, and it's completely free. You can download it using the description below. It's what I recommend over Logic's stock options. This is what it looks like on the chain. I'll open it up, zoom out so you can see it a little bit better. Perfect. Let's take a look at this section we were working on to see what our LUFS is. LUFS is gonna be really essential as we're doing these moves in mastering. LUFS is a measure of perceived loudness, and it stands for loudness units full scale. This is going to be essential as we actually add our mastering assistant in Logic. As you can see, we're at negative 20. Negative 20 isn't bad by any means, but we really want this to be competitive with other mixes. Most streaming services will recommend negative 14 LUFS as a standard to shoot for. Anything that you upload to Spotify, for example, that's above negative 14 LUFS will just get turned down by their algorithms. If you're only gonna be uploading to streaming platforms, it might make sense to use negative 14 LUFS. But more than likely, especially for a genre like this that's EDM or pop, I want to compress that even farther to be more competitive with the other songs on Spotify. If I compress, say to negative nine or negative eight LUFS, it's gonna be a lot more compressed and it's gonna have a lot more loudness or perceived loudness that we want from a track. It's also gonna be way more competitive with some of the other songs on Spotify, even though it's gonna be turned down later. Okay, now that we've got our metering plugin out of the way, that's absolutely essential. We can hop into Logic Pro's mastering unit. Logic Pro's mastering assistant is a great tool for new producers learning how to master, but it's not an end-all be-all mastering tool. It's not gonna make your mixes sound amazing like a professional master did it. And I'm gonna show you how we can do that using this in combination with stock plugins because this is a great tool, it's a great starting point, but it's not gonna fix everything that you need it to. If we look at this chain here, you can see some of the 
stock plugins that I'll be using and talking about later, but let's for now start with mastering. This is the mastering plugin. And when we first open it up, it's going to analyze our song and see what moves that it thinks it should make. So I'm just gonna reanalyze my section right here. Usually you wanna pick the loudest part of your song because that's gonna be the one that has the most impact and it's gonna be affected the most by mastering. There may be parts such as the verse that need a little bit more work or different EQ, but that's a topic for a different day. We're gonna assume that you have everything sounding pretty similar from the mix. So this is the curves that it chose for me. We can change the character up here from clean, valve, punch, or transparent, and we'll experiment with those a little bit. We'll also can change the loudness here, but let's play it and just hear what it sounds like. Our LEFS is automatically calculated to about that negative 14, which is optimized for streaming platforms. That happens when you have this loudness right in the middle here. But if I go up to one, you would expect it to maybe boost my LUFS by maybe one, but check it out, it doesn't. My LUFS is all of a sudden at minus five. And if I go to minus one, you would expect it to maybe drop my LUFS by one. Not the case at all. We're now at negative, let's see, 25. Let's set it back to zero. And let's boost this up until we get to about maybe minus nine. That will give our a real competitive sound. So maybe a little bit too high. Looking at this momentary to get this short term and the S to get more of the long term. So this is pretty good. Our true peak is set to minus one, which means that it will clip at that minus one. If we look at our stereo outbus right here, we can see that it is clipping at minus one. That's because our true peak right here is set to minus one. Now to add a little bit more, we can add more width to our section by going here. It also is more beneficial in my opinion to have the width higher on the high end of the stereo spectrum and more mono down at the base parts of the spectrum. Now that isn't possible with this as far as I'm concerned it's just adding some stereo width to kind of that same curve that I mentioned but it's not as customizable. So let's just add in a tiny bit of width and see what it sounds like. to be way too much we're starting to lose some of that mid middle power sounding a bit weird just want some subtlety right here now this correlation meter is how close it is to wide. Minus one would be completely mono and plus one would be completely different in both speakers we want probably somewhere about where we're sitting right here cool Okay, now that we have the loudness dialed in and the spread dialed in, we can hop into the EQ, which ideally in a mastering change is the first thing that you start with, but just so that you guys can hear it better, I started with the loudness so that you can hear it up to snuff. This EQ has automatically pointed out different points in the song that are going to correspond to the peaks and valleys that Logic think should be boosted or should be cut from our song. Now, there's not a ton we can do here. We can only do the mid-range, we can only do the high end, and we can only do the low end. There's a three-band EQ that we could potentially affect on top of Logic's already AI analyze peaks and valleys that we they've created. You can also boost those peaks and valleys by going here or get rid of them by going down here. I'll adjust this in real time to get something I like. I like the punchy sound the best. I thought the low end sounded the best on this one. Take a little bit out of the mid range and add a little bit to the high end. You can adjust this a little bit too. Get rid of some of that mud, just really slightly really boost these peaks and valleys and see what happens. 
Now we'll stop it there. It's sounding pretty decent, but I think it could sound even better if we start incorporating some stock plugins into the mix. Like I said, the Mastering Assistant is a great, really awesome starting point if you've never done anything with mastering. It's got some really intuitive controls and it's super easy to understand. Although there are a couple knobs and a couple of options for you to choose from, but it is not as hands-on. It is not as customizable as it would be if you are using stock plugins, which is why we're going to hop in to them right now. Starting off with EQ. Now notice that this has a black background. The black background is because I'm actually not using a normal channel EQ. I'm using what's called a linear phase EQ. You can find that by going to EQ, then clicking linear phase EQ. I find that linear phase EQs are a bit more transparent when it comes to mastering. And as far as I can tell, I don't know on this mastering assistant if this is a linear phase EQ or not. The first move I like to do on a mastering chain is to get rid of that really low end on my song. This is actually gonna help things open up quite a bit. I'm gonna change my decibels per octave and make the slope slope steeper. 36 is a good starting point. And I'm going to barely bring this in until I can hear it affecting the low end. There is a low end rumble often below 40 hertz that can add muddiness to your song. We don't really need that low, low, low end. It's only gonna add more muddiness to our track. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll keep this master on so that you can hear what's happening. Let's just get rid of this really low end. I'll go way too much so you can kind of hear it doing too much. Right around 25 hertz is a good part for this song. I don't want to cut into that bass too much, but I want to get rid of all of that low end rumble. Now that I have this EQ up as well, I can make more broader strokes than I would with some of the other mastering plugins with only this three band channel. So let me go in. I'm going to just add in a couple of frequencies that I think need it. Just a little bit in the mid range, maybe around 600. Notice I'm using a very broad stroke and only adding about one decibel. Maybe I'll add a little bit more high end. Now, another way to add high end, an exciter. Now on the mastering assistant, it actually has an exciter here, but this is gonna give you way more control. This is just one button that you click on. I have, it excites the harmonics at the higher end like you would expect an exciter to do, but it gives you only one button to press. So let's do it ourselves with an exciter like this. Let's try it. Can adjust the frequency here. I just wanted to be excite some of that really high end, maybe 10,000 above. Add a little bit of harmonics. Let's try a different color. Without. With. Cool, that's adding that brightness in that high end. And you can use this a little bit lower than 10K to bring out some of the vocal and the characteristics of the vocal. Check out what happens if I put around 6K. Cool, I'm gonna put it back to where it was. That's kind of where I liked it. There's another trick we can do to even at get more volume from our track. If we're struggling to get there with this mastering assistant, which we shouldn't be because this weird ass loudness meter should be pumping plenty of volume for us, we can actually do something called hard clipping. And we can do that through a bit crusher in Logic. Now hard clipping is exactly what it looks like. It's when the peaks of these waveforms literally get cut off. This is different than soft clipping. It's kind of counterintuitive, but soft clipping actually sounds more like classic distortion and it actually adds some crunch whereas hard clipping is more transparent hard clipping is exactly what it sounds like it's where these waveforms get clipped off at the top we're going to put down sampling to one we'll put the resolution to 24 and if we put this drive up ever so slightly we're going to start to hard clip our sound we're giving it volume and it's actually pretty transparent because we have a mastering assistant, I'm not going to do this. I just wanted to introduce the concept to you that you can do this with a bit crusher. And now I'm gonna go into something called fat effects. I'll zoom out so you can see it a little bit better. And here we go. 
Now, Fat Effects comes stock with a bunch of plugins that we probably don't want right away. We just want to choose our own. Now, you can do that hard clipping, as I mentioned right here with this filter. Now, if we take a look, hard clipping, we can actually just add it in with Fat Effects. But I'm going to turn that off for now, okay? Uh, we want our output to be the same as our input, and we're not going to have a limiter on at all, okay? And we're also going to add some gentle, gentle saturation by going here and clicking on distortion. Now, I want this to be really subtle. We're just adding in some very gentle tape saturation. I also like this effect called the bass enhancer, and we're going to find a, probably a lower frequency to enhance our bass. This is going to turn it up, but it's going to add some more harmonics so that it's more noticeable in the mix. So now that we have the bass enhancer and distortion, let's turn them on to hear what it sounds like. I have to go into our mastering assistant and turn this down. Look, we're at negative eight LUFS. That's a little bit too high. So we're gonna go down here. Take this saturation down a bit. And let's turn it on and off. Without, with. Giving our low end a little bit more. Now, there is another plugin in Logic that you can use. And the next one up is called the Adaptive Limiter, which you can find here and the adaptive limiter looks like this it is a classic limiter but because we're using the mastering assistant we won't really need to use it so much if you're just going to use your own settings this will give you a little bit more control but i think the mastering assistant is good enough that the limiter is something that you probably won't need to use so i'm going to get rid of this and i'll turn it off here here are some common problems that i see when people master it is going to sound a little bit more competitive, especially with this easy to use mastering assistance plugin, if we just crank this loudness and continue cranking it. That's not really what we want to do. Notice how the dynamic range of the track starts to fall apart. There's a lot of introduced distortion. It starts to sound really bad on the low end. That is a no-no. Similarly, not boosting enough is probably a bad thing. Is actually pretty decent but if we go like minus we can start to hear it gains a lot more dynamic range but it doesn't have as much loudness which is really what we're after in the master it depends completely on what genre of music you're working with if you're working with classical a minus 14 LUFS might make sense. Maybe even a minus 16 LUFS might make sense so that you have a huge dynamic range to work with. If you're working with pop or EDM like this, I'd encourage you to expand that even further. Minus 14 might not be enough to get that compressed sound you're after. Minus eight might be something that you're worth shooting for. Now let's just take a listen before and after with the stock plugins I added. I'll leave the mastering assistant on just so that you can hear the same volume so you can get a better representation of gain matching. Here we go. Without. With. You can hear that bass bumping a little bit more. You can hear more high end from the exciter. There's a lot of good things going on. Sounds cleaner. Without. Sounds a little bit more muddy. Sounds less transparent with those three moves. Sounds better already. And we didn't change anything about this at all from the mastering assistant standpoint. With Logic Pro's mastering assistant and stock plugins, you've got a powerhouse at your fingertips. Remember, mastering is about balance and subtlety. It's about enhancing, not altering. And most importantly, trust your ears. They're smarter than you think. Experiment, listen, and learn. That's how you'll get those professional sounding masters. If you're interested in learning more about music production and mastering itself, I actually wrote a whole chapter and an entire book on music production. And as a thank you for stopping by the channel and watching this, I'm gonna give it to you for free. Normally, it's 20 bucks. If you use the code MBMADDYMASTERING, you can download it for free from my website, link in the description. And if you're not into reading, there's an audiobook that actually details all of these concepts with examples because it's an audiobook that I think is pretty cool as well. You can check that out in the description. Keep making that awesome music and I'll catch you in the next one.